in January of 2003, I was kidnapped from the premises of a courthouse in Faisalabad. And it happened because during the Ramadan, the one of the Islamic holidays, the Islamic peoples take the Quranic verses and they put it on the walls. During this time, I was um, 10 years old and um, I had gone to my mom and I asked her to write down Psalm 23 on a piece of paper for me. My thinking was, um, if they have Quran verses around the campus, I can put Bible verses right next to it. Not realizing the consequences of it, not knowing what the implications of uh, such an action could be. And I didn't know why he wanted. I just wrote it and took some print out and gave it to him. And he went in the campus and um, posted on the walls everywhere. And that was a big problem. And uh, everything started from there. One of my employee or maybe a student, he informed that information to Pakistani Taliban. And they came to my office seven o'clock in the morning and they start breaking stuff, cursing and hitting me. And I, I was praying and Holy Spirit told me that I should talk to them and I should offer them all my business and whatever I have. And I told them that uh, I can give you everything, my car, my, my all that business, and I will give you the blank check so you can write whatever you want. All of a sudden the whole, everything was changed. And from there, I called my wife and we went to my parents' house. And from my parents' house, one of my friend who was attorney, he advised me that I should uh, file a lawsuit for, against those people. And I did. I went back to the same jurisdiction, same city. And from the premises of the courthouse, they kidnapped me. And they took me to an abandoned cotton factory. And I was there for three days. and. Every moment it looks like that's just going to be finished any time. I was praying and um, asking God uh, help him where he is right now. Somehow the leader of that group, he got a call from his doctor and the doctor told him that you are positive hepatitis and C. And he was like panic and he almost forgot about me and he left the scene and there was only two guys left. Again, the Holy Spirit, he told me that this is the time you're gonna run from here. And I was waiting and I said, no, if I'm gonna run, they're gonna shot me. But I listened to the Holy Spirit and I started running. And Almost, I think I, it was almost two hours I was on the same road. I was keep on looking at my back, but I, did, I never see those people. Uh, from there, actually, I called my wife and I told her that I'm on my way. It's going to take like five, six hours, get kids ready, take some basic stuff, and we have to go from here. From there, we were on run for three years. In three years, we went to 13 different cities. Some of the cities, we stayed less than one day. And sometimes when we go to some city, over there, we, have, we know somebody, we ask for help. Most of the time, the people refuse, they don't want to help. But on the other hand, there were so many brave people. They help us, they hide us in their houses. Sometimes we don't have any place to go. And we were on bus station or train station, just sleeping there. And we don't have money most of the time while we are on run. And just God was providing us every single day. For those next three years, I just remember bits and pieces of it because I was so young. I remember just growing up way too fast, just um, having to mature. 
when we were on the run, it was very hard for me, like four kids and my baby daughter born on the, uh, when we were on the run. And it was very hard. Sometimes we didn't have food and we don't know where we gonna live. Kids were not going to school and we were just sad for this situation because we were living in very good condition and now we didn't have anything. It's like when I'm telling you a story, it looks like very easy that somebody is just walking around, going in the station, sleeping there. But when you live like that, it is totally different. Every single time we were in a kind of situation, we might have to leave tomorrow. And so many times it happened. During that time, we, were, we don't have anything. There was still a joy of the Spirit with us. We can, we can feel the peace of Christ with us. And we, can, we, we know there is a hope in our life. And those things were always sticking with us. And every single day we see her miracles in our life. Even in that ministry, I have seen all kinds of miracles. The dead people rise from in a new life. There were so many people who came to Christ. So I was praying all the time, God opened some door. And then my brother-in-law, who was a commander in the army, he had a dream that God showed him that I'm going to marry. I said, I have zero money. I don't know what is, how is going to happen. And I was laughing. And he said, OK. He said, get ready. I get ready. And he took me to his bank. And he got a personal loan for me so I can apply for, I can prepare the traveling document. It took us another few months to complete all those documentation. And we went to American Embassy. And I was giving that interview. It was like a very basic interview. I haven't listened in my whole life that somebody who is giving you U.S. a visa and he's just asking your names and where you live, nothing else. And he, he gave me some tickets which says that I got the visa with my family. And he said, enjoy, sir. He was talking to the um, person and my, me and uh, my kids, we were praying that time and so many thoughts were coming in our mind. If we didn't get visas, we need to go back and, and we have to face again that situation. But we just trust in God, something God has planned for us. That's why we are here and he's gonna uh, help us uh, more and use us for his glory. We were on our knees praying in tongues out loud because we were that desperate to leave that country. We didn't want to be there anymore. We knew that would mean we wouldn't survive. No one can survive with four kids um, in that situation for that long. And I think God understood that and getting that visa for the six people was his answer. All of us, we get a multiple visa for five years. And God opened his hand, when I should say. That was, for me as a young kid, confirmation of prayer that we prayed every single night, um, knowing that God answered it, and um, knowing that he was faithful, and even though we were suffering, we were in pain, that God was there. He's gonna provide every single need that you have, and he can love you. Yeah, I mean, I can have a million doubts about anything else in the world, but I can never doubt God. 
because I am living proof of him. And, and I will never forget that.